Alright, a couple of geometry problems here. And I'm going to be completely honest, geometry is not what I would consider my strong suit. I normally, if I'm going through these tests, I normally skip the geometry problems, try to get back to them later. Uh, 11 and 12 are good problems for review, so I will be working through these problems today. Number 11. Triangle ABC is inscribed in the circle shown such that the measurement of angle A is 80 degrees and the measurement of arc AC is 140 degrees. Find the measurement of angle C. In geometry problems, it's a good idea to just start labeling things. So, the measurement of angle A is 80 degrees. 80 degrees. It does say the measurement of arc AC. Let's highlight the arc AC. Now, just for review some geometry, the measurement of an arc is not the same as the length of that arc. Arcs can be measured in degrees, and again, if you have an entire circle, well, the sum of the measures of the arcs that make up that circle will be 360. What we also know is that the measurement of this arc deals directly with this angle over here, B. So I'm going to kind of highlight this angle out in, in green as well. The rule for arcs in degrees is basically if you have a central angle, if you had an uh, angle that was centered at the circle, and if we were studying this angle measure that creates the arc, AC, this central angle right here would have the exact same measure. So this angle is 140 degrees. And if you can kind of notice that it is obtuse. A uh, lesser known theorem is that if you have an angle right that's on the edge of the circle there, like angle B, the measurement of that angle is actually half the measurement of the arc that it opens up into. We're looking at angle B because uh, the end points of this angle open up to the end points of the arc AC. This angle that's on the edge of the circle here is always half the angle measure of the central angle. So this, if this is 140, this must be 70. We wish to find the measurement of angle C. So this right here we know that in any triangle, the sum of the interior angles must be 180. So we can set up an equation, 70 plus 80 plus C equals 180. The 70 and 80 is 150 plus C equals 180. Subtract 150. So, and I'll write it in formal geometry terms now. The measurement of angle C equals, in fact, if I want to get real technical, it's in a capital C. Wow, that's a very capital C. 180 minus 150 leaves you with 30 degrees. C. Number 12. Find the perimeter of the pentagon shown to the nearest centimeter. If you notice in this pentagon, it's made up of three triangles, all of which are either a 30-60-90 triangle or a 45-45-90 triangle. Those are our special right triangles. Let me go ahead and list out the properties of special right triangles that you should be studying and that you should be familiar with. There are two special right triangles that you should know how their uh, side lengths relate to each other. And this is not drawn to scale, but it's totally the best of my ability. Um, a 45, 45, 90 triangle is actually an isosceles triangle. If you label one of the legs of this triangle, uh, and just called it X, it's isosceles, so the other leg would also be X. Its hypotenuse is always x times the square root of 2. Okay, the uh, 30, 60, 90 triangle, assuming this is 30 degrees and this is 60, the smallest 
side of this triangle is the side that's opposite 30 degrees. You know what? I really should be putting degrees signs in all this because we are in degrees. The shortest side is the side opposite of 30, and we're going to name that side x. And we're calling it x because from there we can say how all the other sides relate. The hypotenuse of the triangle is always twice that value, 2x. And then the side that's opposite the 60 degree angle, the larger angle, the larger side, is x times the square root of 3. The side length ratios for special right triangles are something that pop up a lot on the SAT test, on UIL test, TMSEA, AMC, any kind of math test. And also, you need to use them a lot for trigonometry. So, you need to know special right triangles. So, the problem is asking us to find the perimeter of the pentagon. Uh, and we only know one side length that is 10 centimeters that's given to us. Uh, this is, however, a special right triangle, 30, 60, 90. Uh, this angle measure here would be 30, since that's 60 and that's given as 90, and then they always sum to 180 degrees. So, this side we'll call x for the moment. We're going to call that x so we can find everything else in terms of that. Uh, side b, the hypotenuse, is twice that, so we can, we can actually write that directly as 20 centimeters. We know that this is 20 centimeters. Um, if you notice, this triangle up here is, 40, is a 45, 45, 90, and we do know this side length now because of this special right triangle. Let me switch colors. Both sides of this are equivalent, since it is isosceles. And this side length here is 10 times the square root of 3. Uh, this value uh, times the square root of 3, so 10 square root 3. Um, that means the hypotenuse of that triangle is the value 10 square root 3 times the square root of 2. Again, because uh, the hypotenuse of a 45, 45, 90 triangle is always at the length of a leg times the square root of 2. So, I mean, we could really simplify that if you wanted to. Uh, 10 times the square root of 6 due to the uh, product rule for square roots. Okay, so we have this side length. Um, I'm going to switch colors again. That triangle led us to this side length being 10 square root 3. So now we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The side opposite of 30 is 10 root 3. We can, kind of, we can call that x in this situation. So opposite 60 is x root 3. So it's really 10 root 3 times another root 3. And if you can, if you want to simplify that, it's 10 times, well, this actually simplifies quite easily. Um, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just 3, because the square roots will cancel themselves out. Uh, another way of thinking of that is we're taking the square root of 3 times 3, which is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So we're taking, we're taking 10 times 3, it's uh, 30. Side length f is 30. Okay, the hypotenuse for 30, 60, 90 is twice this value here, so 2 times 10 root 3, or really you could say 20 root 3. Alright, after all that, dealing with all that triangle stuff, what we really want is the perimeter, so we want to add up everything here. Let's start here, go in this direction, and just write the sum. We have 20 plus plus this 10 root 6 plus 20 root 3 plus 30. And again, this value, 10 root 3 right here, is not part of the perimeter because it's an, it's an interior. Anyway, for this statement, I would say grab the graphing calculator and don't look back. In my calculator, I'm getting a lot, of course, because we're just 
dealing with square roots, it is an approximate value of 119.1359, I'll watch, keep going. So it says the nearest centimeter, answer is D.